Hello you guys, happy Monday. Welcome to the start of a new vlog, as well as the start of a new year. Happy 2018. Today is New Year's Day and didn't really do anything for New Year's Eve. I'm just really not into the party scene and after the week I had last week, all I wanted was just to rest. And it was lovely. Now I love New Year's, but I've never been the type of person who is always like, oh yeah, new year, new me, because I feel like people just don't actually take resolutions seriously. But this year I am diving in head first because you guys know how much I love to set a good goal. So I decided since it is my 22nd year on this earth, that I would make 22 goals for 2018. And so far I've come up with 18. So I'm almost there. Some of these are very lofty goals. Others are very achievable goals. No, I think all of them are achievable. No matter how lofty they are, they're all achievable. Or at least I'm gonna try. I really enjoy working towards something. And like I've probably said in the past, sometimes just the journey towards meeting a goal ends up being more rewarding than the goal itself. So. I'm throwing myself into these goals. One of them we are actually working on right now, and by we, I mean my mom is doing a lot of the work. But we're trying to get some of my stuff organized. Mainly, we just have a lot of medical supplies. And I know that you guys understand that too. I get a lot of messages saying, oh, can you make a video about how you organize your medical supplies? And I'm like, uh, no, could you? Because I have absolutely no idea. We are surrounded by boxes. I feel like we're living in some kind of strange pillow fort. Seriously, there's boxes, piles on boxes of medical supplies. And every time we feel like we're getting a handle on it, we get another delivery. It's crazy. For those of you who don't receive medical deliveries for something like a port or a stoma or a feeding tube, you might not understand the sheer volume. We have cases and cases of formula. We have boxes of the formula bags. We have saline bags. We have saline flushes and heparin flushes and alcohol swabs and just never ending gauze and my lovely mom just interjected that is also why we do a lot of driving instead of flying because it is ridiculously hard to travel with all of this stuff. We are very thankful for all of the measures that helped me to stay alive and to live the life that I'm able to live. It's just that it's taking over our house. So I have a few of these like rolling carts that I have in my room and my mom just picked this one up as well. So we're trying to just go through them and figure out, okay, like that's going to be the one that I take to the bathroom. So that's full of like Lush and body products and stuff like that because they can't carry them. So I need to roll it. And then I think this is going to be the one that's next to my bed because it has a platform on top. I have another one of those and I, oh, right here. That's going to be my little medical cart where I keep all of the medical supplies that I need to reach most often and probably maybe put the nebulizer on top. We'll see how it all works, but these carts have been the best organization system that we've found so far just because they're movable. So if I'm attached to a feeding pump or something like that, it can come to me rather than me having to go to it. Hey guys, so I'm gonna be completely honest. I'm a little bit freaked out right now. I went to get up and get ready to go to sleep and I cannot move my foot. The last few hours I've been having like increasing pain in my knee and my ankle like more than even usual. I cannot move my foot. It is the weirdest feeling ever. It's like I'm telling it to move and I'm looking at it and it's not. I don't think that I'm gonna be able to walk on it. I'm like texting all of my family to see if anyone is awake and can come help me. But it doesn't look like anybody is and I don't wanna call them because I don't wanna wake my dad. He has to get up for work at like 4 or 5 a.m. He's been working 12 hour shifts for like six days in a row. So I really don't wanna wake him up. 
but I don't know what to do about my foot. This is me trying to move it. There's my foot. That's me. I'm trying to move it. Right now I'm trying to pull it towards me. And now I'm trying to push it forward. Up. It looks like I can get it to move a little bit to the side. Oh, no, I lost it. Well, I got one little movement. That makes me feel a little bit better. Thank God that I have physical therapy tomorrow. Otherwise, I don't know what I would do. There's no way I'm going to like an ER. Hello, you guys. Happy Tuesday. I'm just sitting in the parking lot of the physical therapy office. So update on my weird foot paralysis situation. Um, I do have some feeling back and a little bit of movement. It's not very smooth, but I'm so thankful. I was getting a little bit worried that I wasn't going to be able to reverse it. But basically, after I checked in with you guys, my phone died. I could not get up off the couch and I couldn't call anyone for help. So I just waited until my dad woke up around like 5.30 and asked him to wake my mom up for me to help me get my medications and help me to get into bed. I was afraid to wake up my dad last night. I just, he has been working so hard. He's been working these crazy 12 hour shifts, it's like zero degrees outside working on a rooftop in the wind so I just I didn't want to wake him up I had no problem waking up my mother <laughs> <laughs> that's not true I do feel really bad when I have to wake her up but at least you don't work on a roof I slept a few hours and when I woke up Things are a little bit better. We'll see what my physical therapist has to say about it. Okay, we are just leaving physical therapy now. Today I did something kind of embarrassing. I kind of fainted from the pain. <laughs> um, so this is like another installment of like Christina ignoring things that are worse than I think that they are. Um, she said that she thinks that my leg shifted so much that it was cutting off the artery and causing something that they call compartment syndrome when the pressure just gets too high and apparently that's kind of a medical emergency but I'm glad that we didn't go to an ER or anything like that because she said if we went to the ER they probably would have just sliced down my leg to let the blood and the pressure build up out. That's not really something I was in the mood for last night but she said I probably should have called her even though it was the middle of the night and if she's ever not around that I need to seek help if that happens again. She got everything like relatively in place and then had me just doing some very minor exercises. If you would even call it exercises, it was literally just moving my foot up and down and the pain just got to be too much and then I kind of fainted. It's all good, I'm fine now and I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna rest and I'm gonna hope that that doesn't continue to happen. I hope that this isn't a trend. She also did this weird trick on my leg where she held cold water and hot water against it to see if I could tell the difference and unfortunately I couldn't which was a bit surprising to me. I knew that I had like different sensations and I couldn't feel my foot but even on parts of my leg I could not tell if it was hot or cold and I could on the opposite leg she did say she wants me to go up and down the back of my leg uh, with a rolling pin to try to break up some of the swelling and the like crazy adhesions that are forming and that big lump that's on the middle of my calf but it's honestly frustrating because I didn't do anything. Um, like I would get it if I was like pushing myself way past my limit and I was going places and walking around a lot and being reckless, but I'm not. I'm being as careful as I could possibly be. I'm doing nothing. My social life is zero outside of my own house. Last week was kind of an exception to that, but I don't know why. <laughs> It would just be showing up now if it was caused by my activity last week. I'm gonna talk to her again later to check in. I am in amounts of pain that 
are pretty close to unbearable. And I've been texting with my physical therapist all day ever since I passed out at her office, which is pretty embarrassing. Um, <laughs> but we're just trying to figure out what the heck to even do. And we were trying to think like, do we even have any pain meds I can take? I really haven't reacted well to pain meds. I have really only Tylenol. My pain threshold is really a whole lot higher than my threshold for pain medication. So I don't really keep it around. So I've just been trying to function and I got up and packed up three Etsy orders before I was ready to black out again. I texted Trish, is there any point in me even wearing this brace right now? Because like my body is just like spasming against the brace so badly that the brace is actually cutting into me and cutting off blood flow and bruising me. She kind of felt like since my leg was able to still twist so badly in the brace, that it wasn't 100% necessary to keep it on if it was hurting me. So I'm pretty much out of the brace for the first time I have been in months, but I immediately feel all of that motion coming back of like that loud snapping every time I take a step and all that stuff. I'm just so tired of dealing with it. I just, I'm not angry, but just feel like after the last five years of having all of these spinal surgeries and brain surgery and whatnot to be able to get back my life for something as little as my leg getting in the way of all of my progress and keeping me in bed once again is just driving me up the wall and we don't have a plan like I just do so much better when I have a plan and I know for months I've been saying that you know we're gonna go and we're gonna see an orthopedic and get his opinion and that's still our plan but basically we're gathering data right now we already know that whatever is going on pretty much is going on during motion and so we're anticipating that any kind of scans isn't going to be very clear. So we're trying to figure out the big picture of what's going on before we go and take it to a surgeon. My biggest fear is definitely that I go to someone and I have surgery and the surgery isn't necessarily what I need or isn't all of what I need. And then I'm going to have to have repeat surgeries and things are going to fail. I really don't want to go down the same route that I went down with my spine where it was just one surgery after the next. I really want to have like a full picture idea of what's going on in every aspect of my leg so that we can just address that and put that on the table right off the bat. So it's not like I'm really stalling going to see this doctor. I pretty much would see him tomorrow if he would see me. I would have surgery tomorrow if he would do it. I mean, I am just done with this. I want it over with. I want to be recovering. I want to just be done with this. Hello guys. It is Wednesday. I'm in a bit of a mood today. Would you like to hear about my day so far? Well, last night I decided that I was going to sleep without my knee brace on, just to give it a try. And I was really excited because I was like, yay, I get to sleep with my knee bent, that's gonna be great. And then I woke up this morning, I woke myself up by crying. Always a great way to start off your day is to wake yourself up with your own tears. So I quickly realized that I had made a mistake in sleeping without that brace on. And walking was extremely difficult. I felt like one of those like super cool agents who are in all those action movies and they get like shot in the leg. They're just like pulling their leg behind them and someone's like, we gotta get you to a hospital. And they're like, no, no hospital. We gotta catch this killer. Except it was really just me biting down on a towel, dragging my leg behind me to the bathroom. Long story short, I'm kind of unable to move my foot again now. 
which is not a good sign. It could mean I'm in trouble. I'm waiting to hear back from my PT. We've been in contact, but things are going downhill. So I've been good. I've been listening to what Trish said to do. We're using a rolling pin on the muscle on the back of my leg, which I'm not exactly sure what it does, but my guess is that it's just kind of squeezing the blood out of the area of swelling like a tube of toothpaste. So that was all going on. And then we were like, oh yeah, it's been a little while since we checked up on the progress of the camera repair. That must be done by now. Why don't we give them a call and see if we can go pick it up? First they said, oh yeah, we're just trying to track down one more little piece. I have like a little broken piece that was holding the battery in and I was kind of like, okay, I don't really actually need that that much. It was more the lens that I was worried about. So can we just get it back? And so he's like, yeah, yeah, okay. I'll talk to the guy and I'll call you back. He calls my mom back and he's like, oh yeah, well we looked into it and apparently this model of camera can only be replaced. Canon is no longer making replacement parts. So we have to send it into Canon and they can send you a new one. And I was like, okay, but what about the three weeks that you guys had my camera, that you said that you were fixing it and you said it was done except for that one piece what about all of that? Basically, they haven't done anything to the camera in these last three weeks. It sounds like they didn't even look into it until today. So frustrating. I am usually very forgiving, but I am just like so fed up today already. I just have like a really big pet peeve about people who just don't do their jobs unless you stay on them. Long story short, we called Canon and I get to send in my camera. Then in five to seven days, they will contact me and will send me a new one. I should have just sent it to Canon in the first place. Here I am trying to like support this little mom and pop camera shop. And you know, I was doing it in a way that I thought that I wasn't going to have to wait a super long time and that I was going to have more control over the repairs. No. I should have just gone to Canon. This is why small businesses are going out of business. I blame this guy. I'm in quite a state of annoyance right now. I am a little bit of a control freak. I don't know if you guys have noticed that. But believe me, everybody else in my life has. <laughs> I very much like to feel like I'm doing something to move forward in my goals and I don't like feeling like things are stalled. And today I feel like everything is stalled and I have no control over it. I'm not usually a cranky person. Today I'm a cranky person. Tomorrow I am going to wake up and I'm going to continue my life of choosing joy and positivity. But today I'm going to let myself be cranky. I think that you need to do that every so often just to get it out of your system. Today feels like a good day for that. Is there anything else I can complain about while I'm on my complaining kick? Gosh darn it. I'm too fortunate. <laughs> hey guys. So I kind of didn't follow through on my cranky day. It got really old and I just feel like the only thing worse than feeling miserably sick is feeling miserably sick and being cranky. I was kind of bumming myself out. So I just had to pick myself up and get over it. Earlier was pretty rough. The swelling was getting worse. My feeling and control in my foot was getting worse. Luckily, my physical therapist texted me and gave me a few little tricks. And we did them a few times. We thought they were working. I gave it one more try and I felt this huge shift and like clunk and I totally regained like all feeling and movement in my foot. My fibula was really out of place. It's that little bone in your leg on the side there that helps you to twist and stuff. And I guess it was helping me to twist a little bit too much. But once I felt that thing clunk back in, it was like, cool, back to normal, like back to life. That was a little bit of a miracle. It was honestly pretty darn startling because I've never relocated my fibula before. So I've never actually felt the bone move that significantly. I've felt other joints relocate. I relocate other joints quite frequently. 
but this was a first for me. So it took me by surprise a little bit, but then I was fine. And then my mom and I just watched some Netflix and I got a lot of you guys' messages answered, which made me really, really happy because it just kind of been piling up after the last week or so. I've taken a lot of time off of social media for the holidays and to spend time with my family. And just because I haven't been feeling well, and I really like to give you guys my full attention and to have a real conversation and try to answer all of your questions fully instead of just giving you like a half-hearted answer. Sometimes I see them come in, but I feel like I can't really give them that attention that they deserve in that moment and so I have to put them off for a little while. So if you see me on social media and you've sent me a message and you're like, hey, is she ignoring me? I'm not ignoring you for any kind of malicious reasons or not that I don't care. It's just that I really want to be able to talk to you and fully answer your questions. Sometimes you ask questions that I need to look into. I need to ask other people. So I don't always get back to you immediately, but I should always get back to you. Oh, lovely. I still have like zit cream on my chin. Real life. Although you guys probably can't even tell because I'm filming on my phone. I guess that's the benefit of my phone camera is it's not quite as high definition as my other camera is. See? There's a bright side to everything. I feel like this is the most boring vlog in the history of vlogs. Alright, I love you guys. You're the best. Good night. She did not look excited. Yeah. She's not gonna come willingly. Cold, huh? <laughs> she just wants to take it off. It's okay. Uh, and nope. <laughs> Come on, she wants to just take it off. It is Thursday and it is a winter wonderland here in the Northeast. It's pretty crazy. I'm looking at the news right now. It's not normal really for us to have severe flooding in this area during snowstorms, but this time the ocean just rose up and just completely flooded so many areas. I'm just watching this and praying that everyone's okay. The winds are crazy. They're like pulling people out of second story windows in a backhoe and the streets are completely flooded like eight inches high with this like thick slush 
from all of the water mixed in with the snow. I'm just so, so thankful that we're safe and warm and we still have power. Of course, we're totally prepared in case we do lose power. Obviously, even after the storm is over, the risk of losing power is still there. You gotta be prepared, especially if you have a chronic illness. I've got my feeding pump charging, my external battery, I've got my phone charging. I'm actually very thankful my IV pump runs on batteries. That's one less thing that I have to charge. Hey guys, it's Friday. We're just chilling in the car in front of the physical therapy office. We were an hour early today. We figured the roads would be slow and the traffic would be bad because of the storm we had yesterday. And the roads were perfectly clear and there was barely anyone on the road at all. So we got here in record time. We're just chilling out. It's way more comfortable to wait in the car than in the waiting room. Plus, you don't have to worry about catching anything. And I don't have to wear my mask. Yeah, my mom can catch up on her phone calls. I mean, I got all my pillows. I mean, I'm good. We'll just have to see what she has to say about my leg. Well, that appointment was pretty interesting. Definitely got a lot out of it. Um, it looks like surgery is probably, okay, definitely the only thing that we can do at this point, so. She's not even really convinced that the surgeon is going to be able to handle this because this issue and the way that it's presenting is falling kind of between sports medicine and orthopedic medicine and neurology because of the way that the swelling is happening because of the atrophy pattern and because of the clonus, that little dystonia I have in my foot. According to medicine, it doesn't make sense that these symptoms would all go together and all be able to be corrected by some of the mechanical manipulation that we've been doing. But we've pretty much proved over and over and over again that this is what's going on, even if it doesn't make sense. And now we just have to find someone who is willing to listen to that and find the root cause. Even then, there really seems to be no easy solution. Well, if you fused the fibula to the tibia, then the fibula would stop moving around. But because the tibia is still moving too much, then both of them would continue to move too much. That would be a problem. We can't address just the kneecap. We really need to address it as one gigantic problem and find someone who's also willing to look at it that way. Not gonna be an easy road. At least I feel like we're starting that journey finally down that road. Up until now, we've been dealing with a lot of pain, but in the grand scheme of things, pain doesn't really worry doctors quite as much as it worries us patients. Now we've hit a point where it is no longer functional and it is actually downright dangerous. And she was saying, we're in panic mode. We're in the territory of if this continues to happen, this might not reverse itself, which is really terrifying to hear because you never want to hear that. That was my greatest fear, is that one of these days I'm going to lose the ability to control my foot and it's not going to come back and that's a harsh reality. We haven't really entertained that too much up until now because we were trying to be positive about it, but now that it's on the table, it's something that we realistically have to keep thinking about. So if this continues to happen, it will become a medical emergency and then we will have to look into emergency treatment. She also did do some work on my jaw at the end, which I was very thankful for, sort of. Um, it's very unpleasant in the moment. I'm very thankful after. She stuck her finger pretty far down my throat today and hit my gag reflux and I bit her <laughs> pretty hard. It's a reflex, probably meant it a little bit, but mostly it was a reflex. 
she is lucky that I grew up with a sister who is terrified of vomiting because I have a gag reflex of steel. <laughs> but now look at how far I can open my mouth. Ready? Ta-da! I'm technically within normal ranges now. So I started being able to open it five millimeters. Now, what did I hit, 37? I think it was 37. 40. 40. We hit 40 today. We're just getting home. It's like the first half of the drive, I feel awesome. And then the second half of the drive, everything starts to twist and want to go out of place again. It starts to get really painful. Whew. So I want to try to recover from that. I think I want to take a bath. But I just arrived home. They had a package from my friends at Theramu. And I was like, I don't think I ordered anything. But they were sending me a birthday card, which is super sweet. And they gave me some swag. Check it out. Look at my new hat. And they sent a t-shirt. It is way too cold for me to want to change. Let me see if I can hold this up with one hand. Can you guys see that? No, you can't. It says, just mew it. That is amazing. I love this. Thank you guys at Theramu, especially Joel. You are awesome. Never really thought I'd be wearing any kind of thing with like hot leaves on it, but you never know in life. You never say never. This is going to be the most beautiful bath ever. Okay guys, it is like zero degrees outside or something like that, I don't know. But we are off to a Christmas party. That's all right, Christmas never has to end. Don't you just wish there were Christmas parties all year long? I think we should do that. Like, who doesn't want that? <laughs> who wrapped it, you? Yeah. <laughs> what the? Over there, she has that. Oh! oh. oh. It's a rapid charge, so it charges your phone. Oh, that is awesome! Good! Good pick! Can you keep it? Can you keep it? Nice! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> what is this? 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 Is it lemon or is it Barnes & Noble? Of course. Barnes & Noble. Leo, I'm trading with you. That's a handle. Yeah. Yeah. Shoveling. Yeah. Shoveling. Yeah. A massage. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that dog. Um, carrying <laughs> luggage or something. Do all well, um, um, uh, clean. Eat. Yeah. Uh, take out the trash. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> climbing. Rock yeah. climbing. Yeah. Yeah. A ladder. Uh, jogging, running, um, hiking. Yeah. 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 You go, girl. Belt. Yeah. Uh, you have a splinter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. 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 I am home now and I had such a fun time tonight. It was really nice to have a Christmas party after the fact because I feel like there's so much build up with Christmas and then it's over and it's sort of sad. So this was actually really nice timing. My mask cell did so well tonight. I am so pleased with how well it's been doing. 
especially since adding the Kremlin nebulizers back in and since getting that Zolar out of my system. I mean, like, there was food there, there were animals, there was fragrance, and then at the end there were some smokers. I did have to put on my mask for that, but, like, that is so great that I even made it that far. The knee, my leg, it really hurts and it's really starting to swell up again but I don't think that had anything to do with the party I think I would have just done that anyway because honestly I just sat on the couch and that's the same thing I'd be doing if I were here at home I need to sleep and I also need to end this vlog I'm gonna have to edit this entire vlog tomorrow <laughs> that's okay though that's what Sundays are for. If you like this video, it would mean a lot to me if you would give it a thumbs up. And if you are interested in checking out some more of my daily vlogs, you can hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys next week. Bye.